Melissa Rose, Angela from Sleepaway Camp. And I just want you to know that you're watching Mr. Tony of the Dead. Yeah! Hey everybody, what's going on? Mr. Tony of the Dead here, and I have another movie review for everybody out there. And this one's called Mill of the Stone Women. This is from Arrow Video USA, and it's directed by Giorgio Ferroni. This movie starts off and follows, basically, Hans, who is this student who is going to write about this professor who makes his art in, like, this um, certain way of women's deaths of torture and you know stuff like that and he has like these wax figures and like this display and everything that people come up and see he lives in like an old windmill who's like been passed down through generations of his family and they also did stuff as well for the wax and that so he's keeping it going and Hans is there to write up about it and everything and when he's there he finds out about the professor's um, daughter who also lives there and she's very very mysterious and you know kind of strange and she's kind of secluded from the world the doctor doesn't uh, professor doesn't let her you know out in the world and everything and you know there's something about her though that he's intrigued and she's like instantly in love with Hans and Hans actually has a girlfriend and a best friend and everything and they're both students they actually uh, are students of the professors and he does like a life drawings uh, and stuff, you know, has like the models and that. And what Hans and them don't know is that the professor, his name's Professor Wall, uh, his daughter Elfie, she has this secret that nobody knows about. And, you know, it might be, you know, better off that they don't know. The movie came out in 1960 and it's a gothic horror kind of movie. It's, in a way, and I don't want to say the ending. I know it's an old movie, but I don't really want to say the ending. Uh, or, like, you know, because if I say why this, it's it's pretty much a, it's a, it's a big giveaway. Um, it's kind of in a way a vampire movie as well. Now, don't if you're not into vampire movies, don't worry. It's not vampire with fangs and that. It's just stuff with blood in a vampiristic way. There's something about wax figure movies like this, like, my, you know, Wax Museum and stuff like that, that's very interesting, and it's very in intriguing, I mean, there's a fear that people have of, you know, inanimate objects, like, say, uh, sculpture, or you're in a Wax Museum, and it's, like, so lifelike that you're just expecting it to move and it doesn't, there's a, a word for it, and I don't have that. But I could totally see people being freaked out by wax figures. Especially the good ones. It's like, or even ones that don't look right. You know, ones that like, it's a sculpture, but that looks like it's going to move on you. Or like, did that move? Did you see that? It's like, that's how these are in here. Like these women in these um, wax, you know, build up and everything. They're so, like, strange and the and the reason is now this is probably a giveaway if you ever seen like any wax museum movie they're not really wax figures okay that's that's one of the obvious things they're actually real women and uh the reason they they look like they're gonna like pop out and just you know grab you or something is because mainly because of the eyes the eyes are the are very very realistic looking and it's because they're real fucking eyes underneath this wax he like the doctor, which I'm not going to give away the reason why he's doing this to these women. That'll let you see if you've never seen this movie before. But he, like, will do what he does to them, and then he takes them, and he in, uh, puts this, like, serum in them. It basically turns them to stone, like, you know, stone. It, like, just hardens them in this place. So he, like, puts their, like, arms, like, how he wants them to be, injects them, and then they stay like that, and he can kind of maneuver it a little bit. And he puts in their face and everything. And then he'll put like a mask on them. And do all this stuff. And then it kind of just looks like wax. A wax figure. But the eyes are actually the person's. And it's very eerie. Like knowing this, it's very eerie. And it, like I said, it goes like it falls into traditions of like House of Wax. 
um, you know, the wax mask, um, which from Severn, uh, which is another very eerie and creepy movie. Like, it's like real people covered in wax, and, you know, that's just, you know, they're dead, but they're, they, it's a real person or the wax. One of my favorites, though, happens to be A Bucket of Blood, uh, starring Dick Miller from back in the day. That's like one of my favorite wax, you know, um, inspired movies. And there, there's a lot of movies like this, like I said, and they all have something about them. This one, like I said, has more of a vampiric kind of vibe to it. it and, and like I say that, it's not a vampire. It's just the, what they do. Great, great movie. Uh, I never saw this before. I know I've seen people have the VHS like on groups for sale and stuff. And I always wanted it. I was like always intrigued, but it was always pricey. And I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. And, you know, Arrow's putting it out. I was like, oh, cool, I get to finally see that movie. Man, I, I enjoyed the hell out of this. I, there is four different versions on here. Uh, there's, like, um, the Italian, there's English, there's a French, and there's another one. And I watched the Italian. Now, I usually watch, you know, when I watch these things... I, oh, I usually watch the other language, you know, like Italian. You can't go wrong with Italian, as it is an Italian movie. Um, but you could also watch the English one, too, because in the special features, when they're talking about the movie and they show certain parts of the movie, um, they don't, like, show, like, them speaking Italian, you got to read. They are speaking English, and it was actually done very well. I thought, okay, this seems like I could watch, you know, because they're speaking Italian, but... And I'm hearing Italian, but I'm reading English. Here, you could see that they're not speaking English, but it's it's, it's fine. Like, and the voices actually match. I believe how the character would sound. Uh, fantastic, fantastic movie. This is a, an awesome addition. It looked beautiful. This is also the first Italian movie, Italian horror movie, shot in color, and it's a certain kind of thing they did to the to the lens. It's some like something they did to it that made it gave it this color that looked amazing like it was just it's such a beautiful looking movie like you could feel how dirty that windmill can be and like oh it's just it was just it was so beautiful it was such a like the colors and everything the gothic like i'm not a i don't really know much about gothic horror and that i've seen a bunch but like i'm not an expert or at all you know i'm just saying what i think but you know, just the the look of it and everything, it, and and then like in the special features, the documentary kind of thing on it, like uh, on all these kind of movies, gothic horror and that, like, oh, I just want to see so many more now. It was just, it was such a beautiful movie, a very good movie, very good movie. I, I enjoyed it a lot, and this movie actually, you know, was one of those that like inspired Mario Bava, Dario Argento, and that. You know, uh, but yeah, it, it was awesome. The doctor is very likable, um, but you know he's actually evil up to something. Hans is likable, but he's kind of a creep. He's kind of a kind of a bad guy in a way. He's like he's, he cheats on his girlfriend, but uh, he like after does that he realizes how much he loves her and wants to be with her, and well she doesn't know what happened because Elfie you know, kind of made her move, her move on him to come to the castle, come to the windmill at 11 o'clock, everybody will be see, asleep, I need you, and he shows up and, you know, bada bing, bada boom, and goes from there, but like, man, the characters in this are, are like, they're so likable, um, there's one girl in here who was like the one who was doing the, standing up in the art room, you know, for them to draw, uh, they have an interview with her in here, and uh, I believe it's an older interview, and it's not a newer one, but she was in, she interviewed her, and there's a scene where you first, before, after, actually after you see her in the classroom, she's there, they're all at this bar, which I want to go to, they bring these mug, big steins of beer, and on the table, you know, like usually you go to a bar, you get like peanuts or pretzels or something, they had pretzels, soft pretzels, hanging on these hooks on the table and there was also like peanuts I believe at the table too but it was like 
so cool and everybody's dancing and singing she and the girl who was in the art room was up there singing a, some French song and you find out in the interview she actually was singing that song and she has a very lovely voice she's singing this French song and um, it was really her singing it and she had a good time singing it uh, she remembers that very fondly and just everybody having a good time dancing around I was like my god I want to be there right now like I see this part on the movie and I'm like that beer looks very good that pretzel looks delicious I want to sit there and just you know and she does a part and everybody goes ah, da, 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 with the beer that oh it was, it was just like a such a good moment in the movie it was like you know even though you know that there's this evilness this evil in the movie this that's lurking um, you know but it's it's mainly very early in the movie so everything's all happy and cheery you know but it oh, man I, I'll tell you what I I really really enjoyed this movie a lot like a lot this is one of my favorite uh, movies that Arrow put out this year I think because I could watch this now I could put this in right now and watch it it was it was a lot of fun and you're trying to find like why why is Elfie has this thing with her uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it um, Hans and her meet up again and then Elfie fucking dies and he's like oh my god so he puts her in, his, in the bed and he's like oh, what the fuck do I do so he doesn't tell anybody he comes back the next day and he uh, takes something from the doctor and he, she, he gives him like a sedative kind of thing and he starts seeing things, he's seeing Elfie, and they're saying she's in a tomb, and all this shit, and then, the next thing you know, he sees her walking down the stairs, so he's like, what the fuck's going on, and it's like, why, why did he, why did she die, why did he see her die, and Elfie, Elfie's like, if I can't have you, and you know, basically, nobody can, and she's, oh, and she like dies, Elfie is fucking beautiful, Hans's girlfriend is very beautiful, the actress that they're talking to, like I said, is French. I had to look up her name. Liana Orfe. Uh, they, they they talk to her about it. And they also talk to, there's a doctor in here that's like a stay-in-the-house kind of doctor for Elfie. Um, actor Wolfgang Price, or Priest. Uh, I don't know if he's alive yet, or he, I don't think he's alive. Um, most of them are dead. It's an older movie, 1960. And the ones that are alive now are just are really, really old. Um, but the interviews are great. So there's not all happy times on set. They were talking about the director and everything, and how he said like, "Oh, uh, Wolfgang Press said like, oh, he, he's like, if I'm gonna have, to, I'm not gonna put up with this guy. If I have to, if he's gonna be like this, I'm gonna quit." And uh, I guess this, they were treating Hans, the guy who played Hans, very, very, you know, mean at times. He was just, you know, just ignorant at times. Um, Hans is played by. Pierre Bryce from Night of the Damned. Liana Orfe, uh, she was playing uh, Anna Lore. Fucking beautiful. Beautiful woman. I'm sorry, Italian women are some of the most beautiful women in the world. I'm sorry. I know there, there's beautiful women everywhere. But every time I see a giallo and it's Italian, you know, uh, Italian, obviously, a uh, woman in there, they, either, they probably have red hair. And they're always so breathtaking and beautiful. But dangerous at the same time and the girlfriend I, guess I could not remember her name I had to look it up was played by Danny Carell and that she her name was Lisa let as they said Lisa let you know uh, Kornheim um, and she was gorgeous too in fact uh, in the movie when um, she, her hit Lisa let gets um, kind of tied up let's say uh, it's kind of like this like provocative like it's a nipple it's a no big deal right it's a nipple but back in the day that was kind of like a not really ha didn't really happen too much uh, so it was like kind of risque you know they were taking a risk showing that too uh, and I thought that too I was like wow there's you're seeing her nipple that's kind of different you know I'm surprised they did it but uh yeah she she, you know, you see a nipple, it's like no big deal nowadays. Back then it was very, oh my god. But, uh, yeah, she she was beautiful, played a great part. She freaked the fuck out when she saw the wax, man the wax mannequins coming. Is that what they're called? 
and the yeah when they were coming by and the because they're on this like track and they go and there's like this music playing and they're all tortured they all look tortured they're all women and she's just I guess she has that fear of them and and they look so real they don't look real you know they're kind of like you can tell they're not real but I guess to her it's it just freaked her some out so much she like passed the fuck out and it was it was something I'll, I'll tell you great cast of characters even the friend who I thought the whole movie was gonna make a move on Hans's girlfriend didn't and uh, he turned out to be a, you know he was a good guy the whole time I'm surprised but he was very likable you know even the doctor like the professor like I said he you like him but you knew he was bad and then there's this the guy the doctor the living doctor played by Wolfgang he he was likable but you knew there was something up with out, up with him. He's very nice to Hans, and of course, as, turn, as soon as he turns, he's like, you know, giving us, uh, you know, crooked face at him. But um, it's really cool. Uh, and and the ending, uh, wow, ending is great. I, I enjoyed the ending uh, a lot. Um, it does kind of end like da da, and the end kind of thing. But it, everything ties up, so you're not left like, well, what the hell? What happened? It worked out. I think it worked out right and well. Uh, I, I, honestly, fantastic movie. And again, I only watched the Italian version. Next time I watch this, I want to go back and watch the American version. And then there's a French version and everything. I'll talk about it a little more. But uh, I'll show you this edition now. We'll get into this. First here, you have this box set. You know, it's like the hard cardboard kind of set. It does come with one of these on the front which everybody knows I don't care about these things I just get rid of them <laughs> but the new artwork on here is from Adam Rebeles I don't know how you say his name but uh, I really like this artwork it's very very nice I love the colors I also love these additions every time Arrow puts one of these out it doesn't mean the movies good but I feel like they have confidence in it or something or they want to celebrate it more but then the side has that on it. Nice big font. Love it. You know. Uh, and then the back has this very cool image on it. You know, very, very neat. Um, and then on the inside is where all the all the goodies are, of course. And you have the same artwork there on there. Um, and this is region A, but there's two discs in here. Obviously, I'm gonna show you. Um, and then the reverse artwork is is that cover and I think that artwork looks great too I honestly don't know which one is better this one's obviously newer and perfect they look it, it think it was a photograph like he did a great job with the artwork it looks exactly like them like no mistaking who they are it looks like it looks amazing and this artwork is great too old artwork for the gothic horror movies are so beautiful and eye-catching and then it's like oh I want to see that you know it could be a horrible movie but the artwork on it is great you know a lot of movies are like that but man they're so intriguing like oh I have to watch that I also like the like how the side it seems like it's I don't know if it's just me or they just it's an illusion but it looks like this is wider but I don't think it is I think they just used more of the space you know on this on the spine and then a uh, spine there too and then you have you know blu-ray here this is the uh, disc one and this is the Italian and English export editions and again like I said this is region A this is you know American version if you're in if you're you know from another country obviously you probably know this but these are Aero Video USA editions sometimes they're A and B or something like that not usually it's usually just A if you're looking for a B version you know, it's you got to go on Arrow Video UK, and that's where you'll find it. But then they have another disc here, another Blu-ray, and then that one is the French and U.S. version. So there's like two different. There's a U.S. export and then like just a U.S. version. And I have yet to watch them, to be honest. I only watch the Italian. I always go right to the Italian version. And then you get these. Uh, I believe there's six postcards here, and everybody knows my opinion about postcards and these things I honestly don't care about them but uh 
Now this one's a little bit of a giveaway, so if you've seen the movie, you can look at it. If you haven't seen the movie, look away. <laughs> but there's that card, and then you have that's little. I can't how you say your name again. La Lorna, whatever. Beautiful. There's Elfie, gorgeous woman. And then you have like an old time looking, you know, uh, poster and everything. And then you have this part here. She's like, oh, I just, Professor, help me. Let me go. And he goes, I'll let you go. And then, you know, it's like, oh, not, not the way she means. And then uh, a very, very cool looking, you know, artwork here with, that's beautiful. That's a cool card. I mean, these are cards. Are, the cards are nice. Don't get me wrong. I like them. I think the images on them are great. I just, I don't do anything with them. Inside, you also get this booklet. And in the words of Aaron Pin, you know, Cult of Cinema, this... I don't know how many pages this is. There's a lot of pages in here. This is a book. It's not a booklet. He said 80 pages. That's not a booklet. That's a book. And this is, this is, I guess it's a booklet, but it could be a book. It's very, very fucking thick. You know, it has the usual stuff in production credits and, you know, other things about the movie, con contemporary reviews and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to show anything just in case. Uh, but, you know, you got, you know, uh, about the restoration, production credit, special thanks, cast and crew, all that kind of stuff in here, like the usual things. You also get this poster, which is my first time opening the poster, to be honest. Um, and obviously the new cover is on here. And it's beautiful. This is an awesome poster. I love the, the artwork to this. It's very, very nice. Like, that's, that's such an amazing, like so cool and in the back uh, is an older advertisement for it and that's pretty cool too I like that I like either one uh, unbelievable see a beautiful girl changed into a petrified monster before your very eyes chilling it'll scare your pants off monstrous have you been petrified lately personal grizzly blood is red and technicolor Ooh. macabre do you dare to be scared Fright, oh, frightening, I thought it said ending. Frightening and wonderfully exciting. A terrifying horror spectacular. Mill the Stone Woman, or women. In blazing Technicolor, a parade picture's release. Man, that is cool. This, either side would look good, but this, this is an awesome ad. That would make me be like, oh my god, they're really, either this really sucks, or this is really good. But either way, I'm going to see it because how could you not want to see something like with that much advertising? But yeah, it's a very, very cool poster, cool booklet. I like the artwork on here with him. And then the back is kind of uh, plain, but it's pretty neat. You know, uh, if you see the movie, obviously, you understand. So yeah, this is a beautiful edition from Arrow. Like, I recommend this. The movie is really, really good. It's beautiful. Great, great characters. Uh, the history behind it and the documentary on here and everything like you know uh, it's just this is a great addition definitely like I said one of my favorites that came out this year I could watch this like I, I right now I could watch it I wouldn't say anytime but it's definitely I'm talking about it. it's like man I want to watch it right now instead of reviewing it it's it's just so it was cool like I, I'm so glad I got to see this uh, I wish I didn't put it off for so long, you know. I wish I would have bought the the VHS tape so I got to experience it, you know, like that. But when I saw they were bringing this out, I was like, all right, cool, I get to see it. But, um, you know, I get to, you know, own it, I should say. But, uh, yeah, fantastic release. A very, very, um, I wouldn't say heartwarming ending, but it's like sad in a way in a way, um, but, you know, a satisfying ending, I would say, I, I enjoyed it a lot, um, but yeah, if you haven't seen this, you're, and you're into, like, you know, House of Wax, stuff, kind of movies like that, definitely give this one a watch, it's like, you know, from 1960, but, man, it's really good, it is really good, it, it still hits, I think, now, you know, because, like, there's the, the, the feeling of, like, what if that happened to you, and you're, you're trapped, somebody's trying to do whatever to you, 
and you know it's just uh, yeah highly highly recommended fantastic love it um, but yeah I'm gonna put a link below where you can go and get this if you want to um, and also I'll put a trailer below for this like I would say proceed with caution trailer may contain spoilers but uh, you know if you could please give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and you know if you're new to the channel you know drop a line below say hello let me know if you're gonna pick this up or if you did pick this up um, you know or if you've seen the movie before what you thought of it and again I'm just learning about this kind of stuff but everything they mentioned in here about like the old-time um, movies and gothic horror and stuff like that I, I definitely want to see them more because this was amazing like I, I can't say enough good things about it I really really can't I'm hyping it up a lot but I just had such a good time watching it and I was so intrigued I didn't pause it nothing I just you know no looking at the phone nothing I just watched the movie really really good um, what else can I say but yeah that's it everybody follow me on any one of the social media links in the description box below as well and that's it thanks everybody for watching and I'll talk to everybody later Bye.